Hey guys, how's it going? Edit here again. In today's video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Over the years, I have accumulated quite a lot of Game Boy parts, including modded parts and original parts and aftermarket parts. And in today's video, I'm going to be making a Game Boy out of all of them. So the first thing we need to do is pick out all of the parts that I'm going to be able to use and need to use. Um, I have got some motherboards and stuff, but I'm not entirely sure what works and what doesn't. Next to me here I have an entire box of shells, so I think what we're going to do is pick out a shell first. Alright, so here's my box of uh, shells and stuff. I've got literally everything in here, Game Boy Pocket, uh, here's an old DMG um, Game Boy Pocket, I've got some aftermarket DMG Pocket ones in here. Um, I've got uh, an AGS 101 Game Boy Advance SP shell and a Game Boy Color which needs some work but underneath all of this stuff is the, um, the DMG shells which is of course what we are going to need for this video. Um, so I'm thinking, I've got a red one that I know is in really really nice condition. Uh, here's, here's the red one. Um, the red one looks very very nice but we would need to find um, a backlight which goes uh, well with this because obviously red is quite a bright colour so if we have like a, a neon green um, or, a ne or a purple or something back like it could look a little bit um, a little bit tacky but it's an official shell so we'll put that to one side. So the next thing we need to do is pick out some parts so I've got some d-pads and a and b buttons uh, we also need to pick out the, the mods that we're going to use and hopefully we can make something looking really really unique. So this is my um, drawers of parts that I have. So I've got D-pad rubbers, A and B rubbers. I think we should uh, probably pick out two of the um, nicest looking ones of these. Um, as you can see, I have definitely uh, got quite a lot of them, but I'm sure there'll be some, some nice ones in here. Um, I've actually got these right here, which is um, some silicone um, D-pad. It's an actual um, rubber, but it's also got the D-pad built in. Um, and it's quite a rare um, mod piece. I haven't actually seen a lot of them. Here is the A and B uh, version of that as well, if you can see that there. So potentially uh, we might use those. Alright, so I've got the, uh, the membranes there for the, uh, for the A and B buttons and the D-pad. We now need to get a start and select switch. So um, here is the uh, supporting white one for that set um, that we're building. So let's put that to one side. So in here I have um, some, I think it would probably... I've got a, a play it loud one, and we've also got a, uh, a regular one as well. So I'll get both of those out. Um, either one of those will be absolutely suffice for this mod. So we've got a few more bits now. We need some sh um, some shields. So here is just a regular um, good condition DMG shield. So we'll pop that to one side. I also have this black one here, which could be interesting, but I'm not entirely sure um, you're going to be able to see a lot of it. So that's fine. Lastly, we need some screen parts. So I'm just going to put this to one side um, because we'll have a look at the um, the bits that we're going to need out of that. Um, and all my mods are in there as well. So let's just put everything on the desk and have a look at what we have. All right, so these are the parts I've got. I've got an OEM um, DMG uh, shell in red. This is the Play It Loud series. Looks really, really nice. All of the text is um, intact and stuff. So that's what we'll use for that. To match the dark um, bezel, I'll use the black um, shield, although you're not really going to be able to see a lot of it, um, but it will kind of just look a little bit cooler uh, down the back there. Hopefully you all agree. Um, then we're going to switch up and have some bright white buttons. I thought that would look really, really cool. Um, it matches my desk theme, so you can't even see when the buttons are in there and when they're not. So uh, it looks really, really nice with those on there, plus because they're silicone, um, for longevity, you'll have uh, comfort. So yeah, I think that looks really cool. For the backlight, the only one I have is a yellow green, but I believe that's kind of similar to the regular DMG um, anyway. So then I've also got a bivert chip and three really nice clean contacts, a black power switch and some white start and select buttons. And then for the parts, I have this um, DMG here, and I'm not actually sure if this works or not. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of testing to see if it does. I thought it did, but um, apparently not. All right, so I'm gonna put the uh, the backboard into um, the red shell because I'm not sure if you can notice, but on this one, there's quite a lot of corrosion. So hopefully this will um, 
be an indication if to whether or not it's the uh, the contacts or if it's actually the whole board um, being genuinely faulty. So let's go ahead and pop the front of this onto here. Next thing to do is just put the power switch in like that so we can have access to it. Oh, okay, there we go, immediately it's working. Is there any lines? No, there isn't any lines. Brilliant, okay. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take out all of these screws, there's quite a lot of them. Um, I'll, st I'll speed that up and put a little bit of music on it, but I'm not gonna go all fancy with the camera angles, we're just gonna get straight back into the, uh, the next part. <laughs> Okay, so I've now actually successfully managed to remove the uh, the back film, and I managed to do it, I think, without actually leaving any residue on the screen. Um, but nothing is ever as it seems, so I think what we should probably do is take everything and put it back together just to test that it's actually working. Oh, okay, it seems to be getting power. There we go. Okay, contrast wheel, and there we go. So there is no lines and we have ourselves a peeled off reflector film, polarizer and uh, reflector. So if you can see, if I take this away, the uh, image also, oh no, I didn't think this through. Oh sugar. Right, that's, uh, that's not very good. If I turn it around this way, you'll be able to see that when I turn it on, the image is actually uh, now flipped. Can you see that? It's inverted. So in order to then, um, so then you have like darker pixels when you do it like that. And then when you install the little um, Bivert chip, it essentially just flips the, uh, the image. So all the pixels that were on, then off, and then all the ones that are off are then on. And then you have yourself a really nice dark, super contrasty, lots of pixels in high definition screen. We need to install the Bivert chip and install the backlight. So I think I wanna do the backlight first it's a little bit easier so I'm going to zoom the camera down um, and get my soldering mat turn the soldering iron on and I'll show you where to do that so I found a polarizer film and um, when you install these you want to make sure that you're getting it in the right um, kind of orientation so you can just slide in the backlight pretty easily in there like so and then in order to actually get the um, the polarizer film in a lot of people actually cut down the uh, little white shield underneath but I'm not going to do that um, in this uh, video I don't really need to but uh, you can see there's the two orientations and it's also even going to be a different orientation um, if you rotate it the other way see it's not quite as dark as, uh, as that um, so we're going to put it in like this make sure everything is slotted in nicely uh, you can pick up all of these parts on eBay I'll leave some links to them in the description below and then just to secure everything down, go ahead and grab the two little screws that um, came from the ribbon cable and pop them back in. All right, so what we need to do is trim the, uh, the, the little wire down just a little bit. Um, it doesn't need to be um, you know, too, too short. Don't worry about it being kind of in the way. You just need to be careful of the screw posts, but you're kind of, kind of a bit clear from uh, buttons there because the only buttons are here. So we're gonna be soldering it. There's probably a, a newer way to do this or um, I'm just gonna be doing it the tried and true way. Um, so on this side here is the uh, the negative and then on this side is the, uh, the positive. Um, so that's, well at least that's the case for my uh, ribbon cable. So um, just when you're doing this, just check. Um, a lot of the time when you buy them from eBay, in the description it will have um, you know a schematic of, of where you need to solder and stuff, so just just pay attention to the listing. I'll try and find one that's um, you know the, the best um, to help you guys. So add just a little bit of solder to the uh, the tip of the wire just here.
just to kind of uh, tin it up. So then we need to solder the wire to the uh, little spot, which I'm gonna just do now, like so. And then we need to slightly just move, move it round so we have access to the other pad. Just be uh, really, really careful when you're doing these things because obviously you are dealing with a circuit board. There we go, now it's nice and exposed and we're gonna trim this cable down too so it's the, uh, the right size. You never need to, uh, to take off too much um, of the uh, silicone um, surround wrap type insulating thing. God, that's probably the longest way of describing it ever um, because you don't want it shorting on anything else. So uh, there we go. And we can just uh, tin that up with what's on the end of the soldering iron and hopefully just weave it in. Okay, that will do, I think. You can actually test if it works just by taking your uh, your board here and plugging it in to the uh, the bottom and turning on the power switch and there we go. So just like that, um, we can actually see the screen working. The obvious um, thing that you might be able to notice is that the screen, although my um, ISO on my camera is really far up, the screen is actually still inverted. So this is what I was talking about before. We now need to flip uh, the image so that this is black like it's meant to be and the background is, um, is, is white essentially so that these pixels are on and those back ones are off. So the bivert chip is the next thing we need to do and this is a really, really self-explanatory little um, chip. So it's been really, really well made. This one is um, a deadpan robot edition. So if you just drop the, uh, the chip on there in a random place, um, obviously I've kind of done this before so I know subliminally where to uh, to do it. You'll start to see that three or four little things are lining up. So we've got a little um, hole here for ground, then there's some more for um, these other little pins surrounded, and then there's two at the bottom. So now what we need to do is lift up the two legs which line up with this, which you can kind of see them there. Um, it's gonna be really, really difficult for me to do this on camera. I need to pull this thing closer to my eye. So hopefully you'll be able to see um, that these two um, legs are now lifted up. And what you will be able to notice if I just, oh my God, that's a hairy arm right there. If I just take the uh, the little chip and line it up with those two legs, like so, there's already a little bit of solder on the bottom there as well. Um, you'll notice that everything actually just lines up perfectly. And then all you have to do is just um, fill up these holes, essentially, just this is the fun part, fill up the holes and uh, attach these two little pins onto the, uh, the slots on the board, and then you're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll try and do this on camera. What I would suggest you do is try to anchor this thing down um, before you try and start soldering those thin little wires. Maybe, um, you know, just get, get the VCC hole filled in first. So now we can fill up the rest of the holes, which should be slightly easier now that we've um, we've done that. So fill up that ground hole, make sure that um, you've really got a nice little ball of solder on all of these um, holes because obviously the better connection, the, uh, the more longer lasting and solid this will be. And you really wanna make sure that you've, um, you know, you've punctured through. Last but not least, bridge these, uh, these two little things together. And that is actually done. So uh, what we can do now is test that it works. I actually ended up having to um, to take off the uh, the board again. And oh my god, you can't even make that up. That is not going to work again. Oh my god, it still works. Holy moly. Oh my lord, I can't believe that just happened. Okay, <laughs> right, let's pretend that didn't happen. I'm gonna go ahead and um, screw this all down now um, and put it back together because that that's really scared me. Uh, 
Uh, we now need to clean up this uh, screen. So I think I might need to get some isopropyl alcohol for that, but let's just see what I can do with a bit of good old elbow grease and breath. <sighs> no, that's not working. Smell this, guys. <laughs> Joking. Um, right, let's uh, give that a scrub. Yeah, that seems to be working. Trebia, isopropyl, Trebia. Okay, that is pretty good. Right, and then we need to uh, put the buttons back in. This will probably do with a little bit of a clean, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And then your A and B button and your start and select, all cushy in there, nice and neat. Am I forgetting anything? Nope, I don't believe I am. We could give the uh, the contacts on the board a little bit of a wipe with the uh, leftover isopropyl on the rag, but this doesn't look like it's actually been used a lot anyway. Give that a clean, okay, bish bash bosh, bang that in there. Okay, and that doesn't look too bad. Pretty happy with that, that looks pretty neat. Okay, so I just need to uh, screw this in, I think. I'll just give that the screen a little wipe as well. Right, let's be super careful putting this ribbon cable back in. There we go, that's good. And close it up. And there we go. Let's load it up with some batteries. Wrong way. And bish bash bosh. We have ourselves a DMG Game Boy. Okay, and the game we will try is Solar Striker. I've just put that in the back there. Hopefully you'll be able to see just how gorgeous the contrast on this screen now is. It's a little bit hard to focus in the dark. Press the start button. And obviously this means you can, uh, you know, there's no light leakage around the side. Um, but this obviously means that you can now, you know, play, play late um, in the dark. That's pretty much going to be it then for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, uh, this little endeavor that I just went on. Um, I think it's come out looking really, really cool. Um, it's a really nice, soft, comfortable um, Game Boy to play on. And the, uh, the backlight kind of, the, the screen is reminiscent of the um, original kind of color and it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Let me know what you guys think of this style of video. It was a little bit crazy, um, but hopefully, hopefully it's something that you have enjoyed. And also if you like this uh, top down shot that I've got going on here, then uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, I'd appreciate if you subscribed put the little uh, bell notification on so you don't have to search for me. You can just get notified when I upload a video. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.